Now, one indicator of this matter is how the rupee is behaving. And a couple of weeks back, I showed you what Bloomberg was saying about Sri Lanka's rupee. Despite the positive trend from the government, financial analysts overseas believe that we are not yet out of the woods, or at least not even in the midst of it. The only thing we need to focus on is self-sufficiency sufficiency in our economy if we are to thrive, meaning uh, we need to find ways and means of building things here, first for ourselves and then more to sell to the world. Now that's uh, how all top economies around the world manage to be successful. Let's get a clarification uh, on this and for that uh, let's bring in uh, former governor of the Central Bank, Ajit Nivad Kabra. Thank you very much, Governor, for taking the time to join me. Uh, now, Governor, the Central Bank has requested uh, to reduce lending rates, uh, but the bank seems uh, very reluctant to do this. Why is that? And is the decision by the Central Bank uh, correct on this uh, for further growth? Good evening, Mahesh. It's good to be back in your program. Uh, you see, it's ironical that the Central Bank is asking the banks to reduce the interest rates while they themselves are paying higher interest rates every week. Just yesterday, or two, two or three days ago, the Treasury bill rate went up, the cutoff point went up to over 19 percent. When the government and the central bank, on behalf of the government, is paying 19 percent, they are asking the banks to lend on pawning deposits or pawning advances at 18 percent. So, you see, you have to walk the talk. If you ask the banks to reduce, then you have to also ensure that the reduction is taking place within the government side. Now, if that is not taking place, these requests are just hollow requests. So, we got to understand that the central bank must set the benchmark, it must set the yardstick and then stick to that. Otherwise, don't say it because the credibility is lost. So, we got to understand that People don't only look at what the messages are from the central bank statements. They watch what the central bank does. So if every week the central bank is increasing the interest rates, the banks will say, hey, what's, what's this uh, all about? They're asking us to reduce and how can we compete with other uh, gaining advances and gaining deposits if the central bank is paying 19 plus for deposits themselves? So I think uh, we also got to see that there is a reflection of the ground situation on the talk that the central bank is making and at the same time you can say goodbye to growth at these interest rates. Interest rates were increased on the 8th of April 2022 and since then growth has been negative more than 10 percent every quarter. So we got to have a revamping of these interest rates if you are going to ever see growth again and unless we do that we can say goodbye to growth. Absolutely. Uh, Governor, I, I don't know whether uh, you remember a report uh, from Bloomberg recently uh, that talked about the Sri Lankan rupee crashing and falling over 350 rates uh, by the end of this year. Any truth to that? Because uh, Bloomberg seems to be pretty confident about their predictions. I think Bloomberg is right. All the ingredients for the rupee to depreciate are presently in place. The mm. IMF has said you got to release all the import restrictions. All the currency restrictions that have been imposed have also got to be released. So in that context, the moment we start paying our debts or even before that with the imports now most probably going to increase, Sri Lanka is going to see the rupee having a huge tumble. The IMF itself, it's ironical that they themselves in their report of March 2022, sorry, March 2023, they have also said that the rupee could perhaps uh, go to as much as 462 per dollar. So Bloomberg has said 350. I would think uh, IMF number and the Bloomberg number uh, should be considered when people look at it and that's going to happen. And also we got to understand when you go into these IMF programs, the currency depreciation and the interest rates increase is inevitable. Today, Pakistan is reporting after their one and a half years of uh, the IMF uh, re uh, program that their currency has hit the lowest. Argentina is reporting that the interest rates in Argentina are now 97%. So these are the 
experiences of countries which have been in a re, in a program recently with the IMF and that is what is happening. So, unless we are very very careful and watching out for these different types of signals to ensure that we do not fall into that same situation, we can very easily get into that trap and many many countries have fallen into that. So, I think uh, we got to be very careful and unless we do that, you probably find that the rupees out of control, the interest rates are out of control and Sri Lanka can be in very, very serious trouble. Governor, uh, soon the IMF uh, teams will be back in Sri Lanka. They will basically take stock of how we did uh, with the 350 odd billion uh, for the first tranche uh, they gave us um, to see whether we qualify for the next tranche. Uh, this time, what do you think uh, the conditions are going to be? And I don't know, our governor, the government seems to be pretty confident that our economy is on the right track and it's recovering. See, Mahesh, before you jump into the water, unknown waters, you have to see the condition of the water. How deep is it? Is there mud in it? Is, are there crocodiles inside? So, if you just jump in and then you start looking for a saviour, then you are in trouble. We went into the IMF program without knowing exactly what we are going into. There were people like me who said, be watchful, be careful about what is going to happen, but nobody listened. Nobody cared to listen. Today we are reaping those uh, benefits of what we have got into. Today we have seen our growth is plummeting. We have seen joblessness going beyond our any type of uh, imagination. People are without work. People are finding it very difficult to make ends meet. Taxes have tripled. The commodity prices are three times. So, naturally we are in a contractive mode. So, when, when the IMF comes, they will impose further conditions. But I would say that adhering to those conditions will cause more pain than we ever had. We are now looking at restructuring. We are talking about restructuring, but we have been talking about restructuring since April 2022. We are still nowhere near completion. Restructuring that we started was said to be first for the foreign debt restructuring. Today, the local debt restructuring is being done and that too only with the superannuation funds, EPF and ETF, not the others. Just see, a few days ago, we paid 19 percent for the treasury bills of three months. And we are saying that the EPF return will be capped at 9 percent. So, whom are we fooling? What is happening? So, actually this is a very, very serious condition which we got to take stock very quickly because IMF will impose conditions and IMF will not be so concerned about the outcome and the consequences. Already people are talking about IMF riots. All over the world it has happened. In more than 14, 15 countries, we have seen some acute riots which have been propelled by the IMF conditions. So, Sri Lanka is going that path. Unless Sri Lanka takes stock and finds some alternative path to steer without these uh, disabilities being imposed upon people, I think we will have a huge problem on our hands and that is something the government will have to think before they get into it rather than after they get into it. Absolutely. Let's leave it at that. Former Governor of the Central Bank, Arjit Nivad Cabral. It's always a pleasure to speak to you, sir. Thank you.